Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a clickable button in Roblox. So you're firstly going to want to create a GUI. Okay, so in the starter GUI, we'll just insert a screen GUI and then you want to insert a text button. Although you could also use an image button, but for this purpose of the tutorial, it's not really necessary. And then what we'll do is we'll just drag this around somewhere on the screen. And what you then want to do is you want to insert a local script. Now, what I like to do is I like to have one local script really that just controls everything rather than having a, a local script in every single uh, GUI element. So what we'll do is we'll have our local script in the starter GUI and we'll just create a variable for our text button. And this will be script.parent wait for child screen GUI wait for child text button. Okay. And then when we've got the text button, we can say text button dot, and then we have a load of different events that we can choose from, such as RBX, sorry, such as mouse button one click, or um, if we just start typing, you'll see a lot more. So mouse button one click or mouse button one down. When you press down the mouse button, this one will fire. When you let go, the mouse button one click will fire. So that's the difference between them. So we're gonna do a mouse button one click, Mouse button one is just the left button on your mouse. It will also fire if you tap on a mobile device. So don't worry about that. Uh, colon connect function. Okay. And then inside this function, we can write the code that will execute when the button is pressed. So we could print out button has been clicked, for example. And if we click on play here or play solo and we click on the button, you can see it's printing out that the button has been clicked. But this doesn't really do anything. It's quite basic. So how can we make this a little bit more um, functional? Well, it depends what you want to do, really. If you want to open up a frame, let's just put a frame in the middle of the screen. I'm going to set the size and position to 0 0.50, 0 0.50. And I'm going to set the anchor point to, again, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So let's just select this frame and we'll make it invisible uncheck the visible property and if we wanted to make this frame appear we could well we'll firstly create a variable for it so local frame equals script.parent wait for child frame oh sorry wait for child screen GUI wait for child frame we could say frame dot visible equals not frame dot visible so it's taking the current the current visible property of the frame which is either true or false and it's inverting it so what this will do is it will give us the opposite of what the frame's visibility property it currently is. So if it's true, we will set it to false. And if it's false, we'll set it to true. So we're essentially just toggling it. Now, if we play the game again, you'll notice that when we press the button, the frame appears. And when we click it again, it goes away. So this is how pretty much every menu system in Roblox works. The, the GUI is always there. The frame is always there. It just gets... Uh, it just gets hidden or shown depending on the status of the visible property, which we're changing via the button. So we've we've stepped it up a little bit there. We've we've made the the frame uh, actually be a bit more interactive. Um, well, we've made the button more interactive by opening and closing the frame. Perhaps now we should actually change the text of the button to say open. And then in our local script, we want to change this text depending on whether the frame is visible or not. So underneath here, we'll just create a, uh, we'll say text button dot text equals, and this text is either going to be open or it's either going to be closed, right? But how do we set this depending on the frame's visibility? Well, it's quite similar to how we've just done the frame dot visible. We'll say frame dot visible and open or close. And what this means is this is going to return a true or false value depending on whether the frame is visible or not. If it's true, then it's going to we're going to return open because when a statement is true, we want this to be returned. Otherwise, if it's false, if it's not true, then it will return close. This is almost like a mini function. We have a condition which can either be true or false, which is whether the frame is visible or not. If this condition is true, then we will the text will be open. Or if it is not true, that means the frame is 
Uh, oh, I've got this the wrong, wrong way. <laughs> I've got this the wrong way around. Sorry. This should be close, and this should be open. Because if the fr if the if the frame is visible, so if this is true, then we want the text button to say close, right? But if it is not visible, then we want the text button to say open. <laughs> okay. Now I I know this could be a bit confusing, but this is basically a shortened way of doing an if statement. It's the same thing as saying if frame dot visible, then text button dot text equals close else text button dot text equals open but this spans one two three four five this spans five lines we do the same thing twice it's just a, a condensed way of saying well look if frames if the frame is visible then we want it to say close otherwise we want it to say open and we'll get more into this when i make a video about conditionals and if statements and things but if we click on play and run this you'll notice that when we click on the button it says close and when we you know when we when 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 the frame is hidden it says open again so very very simple way of um having a, a button which opens and closes a, a gui and just a brief introduction as well into how uh, text buttons and image buttons work in in roblox so let me know if you enjoyed this video uh, and if, if you want any more gui videos i'm happy to make them uh, and I will see you in the next one.